Hey everyone, uh, so today we're going to be talking about abstraction and encapsulation and how uh, those design patterns can often hurt performance. Um, and that may seem somewhat unintuitive because code abstraction and encapsulation is generally considered good practice. That's how we write um, clean code, it's how uh, you know your brain can just compartmentalize and, and move part of the program to the side because you understand that there's a function that does X, Y, or Z and you just use that, you don't worry about the implementation details. However, I'm just gonna highlight um, some kind of real world examples, again, based off of stuff that I see uh, in code reviews. Uh, often, you know, the first pass I have at writing something um, probably is gonna use uh, some level of abstraction um, slash encapsulation when you're doing it. It's fairly natural to build things that way, but then ultimately find that there's a performance bottleneck and have to kind of restructure things. Um, so I'm just going to look at um, an example here um, of a kind of before and after to kind of illustrate the point that, I, that, that I'm making. So let's say we start, you know, building out this functionality um, where ultimately I have games. Each of those games need to get some data from an API, and then I loop over all of those games, fetch the um, uh, game for each item, and then the game itself uh, will reach out to that API. So from a point of encapsulation, this is quite uh, clean, right? You have simple functions here, a simple function that takes a game ID, returns some data, uh, whatever is then calling that function is very easy. You just pass an ID and you get the data back. Um, so really what I'm talking about here is the trade-off between uh, making easy, simple interfaces via encapsulation and the performance trade-off that, that doing so quite often has. Um, so in this example, Again, I loop over the games, each um, ID will be calling this function. Each time this function is called, it's calling this function. Um, now this is gonna be very slow uh, because I need to iterate over six items. That's gonna be sequentially six requests, um, six get post calls, et cetera. That's gonna add up to a certain amount of time. Now, the um, difficult thing about once you've introduced these levels of abstraction is you will look at the code and won't really see any places that you can optimize. You'll look at the get game, uh, get game data function and it takes an ID, it does a remote request, it JSON decodes it, it returns it. There's really no way to make that faster. Again, I look at the get game, it takes an ID, well, I need to get the title, so I need to call get post, and I need the data, so I need to call that. So again, there's nothing that I can really optimize there. And the same for the for each loop. So Abstraction ultimately introduces boundaries into our program, which you know are good for general understanding of how the program you know runs and, and how you can modify it. Um, but it's introduced those boundaries where I look at this code and ultimately I don't see any room to be able to optimize given the architecture slash structure of the code. If I jump to an example that potentially um, uses a, a different um, architecture for this code, we can see that I can get something that can run a lot faster. Um, so for example, I have the post IDs, I get all the posts at once, and then I here I'm calling the API that allows me to get multiple things at once. However, uh, you can also use WP org requests, requests uh, send, where does it send multiple? I think on a request multiple, there we go. Um, so that would allow you to send multiple requests in parallel. Once I get those, I decode the data, then I iterate over my um, post objects. Sorry, that should be games as game. Um, and then I, I build my data. So this code is going to be, you know, an order of magnitude faster to the previous example here where I've abstracted things into functions. Um, but it's not probably what you'd consider, you know, very clean code. We kind of have a tendency and it's generally considered best practice, right? To break our things down into small components, small functions, etc. cetera. Um, but I'm using this example to kind of highlight what the performance trade-off is of doing that. Um, now, this is not about this specific example. I know it's probably quite easy to look at this example because it's quite a simple one and think like it's kind of obvious that that isn't a good architecture. Um, but it actually really does fundamentally impact all code in the same way. Uh, you just might not realize it at, at the time that you are building those abstractions because later things may come in to introduce performance penalties of those smaller functions that you've broken out and that has kind of cumulative slowdown effect of, of doing so. So it may seem like this is a simple example, but this is fundamentally and always true when you're introducing encapsulation is you can only make performance worse by adding abstraction and encapsulation. You can not make things faster. It's quite, I think, um, I think when you think through it, it's quite simple really why that is. Um, the more boundaries and barriers we introduce into the program via function boundaries, let's say, or, or other boundaries as well, uh, we can only limit the amount of shared information that we have across the program and therefore 
our um, potential need to recompute things that have already been recomputed, refetch things, you know, from a remote URL that may have already been fetched, or not even fetching something that's already been fetched, but the opportunity to do things in parallel and in bulk, for example, pulling many things from the database at once versus your function pulling something from the database at once each time it's called. We fundamentally only lose opportunities to do that. We can never gain opportunities to do more batching the more abstraction encapsulation that, that we add. Um, so I have a, a kind of simple diagram here to explain you know, this, this very simple example. I have my get games function. Each one of those is gonna call get game with a different ID and that is gonna then call get game data. Uh, so the more, ultimately the more, um, calls to this function that we add, we linearly increase the time for the program to run. And that is ultimately uh, the problem of, uh, of this architecture. This is um, a, uh, I guess, ON is like the big O uh, notation for what this performance is. Um, that means if I have N items, uh, it will increase proportionally to that N. Um, and that is typically a problem. It's usually not a problem when we you know, have written our function at the beginning and this is all it does, right? I'm just, I'm getting one game and I'm getting the data for that one game. And then maybe um, we introduce, you know, calling two func calling that function twice. And again, you will not see any major downsides to doing so. However, that may accumulate over time as maybe more data is entered into a database or, um, you know, the, the system is expanded to handle more, I don't know, in this case, maybe it's more sports or something that you maybe didn't foresee at the time any kind of ON behavior is going to generally just slow down over time. Um, and that is a problem for performance. Now, how does this typically happen so often, I find as well and so easily? I think ultimately we, you know, we, we start tackling a larger problem by tackling the small parts of that problem. Uh, maybe you're gonna build a new integration. So you say, okay, I'm gonna need a new data type for that. I'm gonna build some utility functions around that data type. I need to get one of them, update one of them. Um, I need to uh, fetch one of them from the API. You will kind of build up those base functions and then you will maybe build an additional layer on top. Okay, I'm gonna need a, a ability to import a whole, um, you know, in this case, a whole game from the REST API or something. So again, you will build up that way. And then at the final level, you would typically say, okay, now I'm going to uh, run a cron job every night to uh, update all of the games in the database or something like that. So again, you, you're, you're kind of going from the small and chunking up and building out. And the problem is when you do that, you will introduce this kind of abstraction by default because you're uh, introducing barriers, let's say, of data flow all the way up the chain. If instead you look at it from the other side, which is you start to say, okay, the thing that I'm gonna to need to do here is update all of the data every night. And you start to build it from that direction instead. So you understand, okay, well, I need to pull all of the data this way. Then I'm gonna iterate over that data and then find all of the posts that match that, yada, yada, yada. Doing it that way down instead is typically gonna give you, um, I would say you're gonna get an architecture that falls out of that, that is more, um, strictly speaking, I guess it's, it's less elegant to do that because as developers, again, we're kind of trained to, um, break things down into small pieces and and have encapsulation because it simplifies building things. Um, but making fast things is quite often at odds with building simple things. If anybody's ever looked at any highly optimized code, I mean, for example, if you look at um, like the WP filter iteration in core, for example, it's quite complex in terms of, you know, the while loops and things that are happening there because it's highly optimized plus that is code that is run thousands and thousands of times every page load of WordPress. So ultimately it's worth the trade off to have something that is um, less clean, less encapsulated, because you're getting the performance out of it. And it's fairly typical, actually, that that trade-off exists. Um, so this video really isn't about, you know, always write things in the most performant way that you can at the expense of, you know, simplicity and encapsulation. But ultimately, you do need to be aware of which times should I be writing for, for performance and which times is that going to be something where performance is, is not going to be critical because, you know, it's not a very hot path or there's not going to be a lot of that type of thing happening or, or something like that. So it's ultimately a trade-off where you need to understand when to take that trade-off. Um, but I, I would say, you know, step one is to actually understand there are kind of, um, you know, I'm, I'm at least highlighting here two approaches. There's a kind of encapsulation abstraction first approach, which I think is quite natural for us to go to, but there is a different approach, which is, I would just say like the keep it simple approach, which is like, get the data that you need, do the work that you need to do and achieve the outcome that you're looking for primarily, rather than thinking more in building up blocks and things like that. Because ultimately the more blocks that you introduce into your code, that's more boundaries, that's more um, barriers between data flow that can only hurt performance. It's not possible to get faster performance doing that. It's only possible to limit yourself further. Uh, so you kind of do need to be able to go in either mode, 
um, and understand as well when to drop into either mode. Um, and it's, it's not unusual to have a first pass at a problem and um, lo and behold, you know, once you've actually got, you know, a large amount of data imported into your system and now you're running through it, things are getting a lot slower than how they were when you just kind of had a fresh clean database. That's usually because of these kind of problems and you may need to kind of go and re-architect um, when that happens. And that can be quite a painful thing to do because ultimately we're not, this isn't optimi optimization that allows us to look at a simple function and say, how do I make this function run faster? It's, it's a much more high level optimization than that to understand how the program needs to flow differently to how you might've initially designed it. And that can make, um, it, that can make it quite a daunting process often um, with you know, kind of just throwing your hands up in the air saying like all of my functions are as fast as they can be, maybe without going to the step of, of understanding how um, that whole uh, function design that you have doesn't really fit a, a high performance scenario. So some good rule of thumbs, I would say, when it comes to, you know, when, when should I choose to abstract and encapsulate and when should I be more wary of that and, you know, do a pattern that more allows me to hoist data loading up to a higher level to batch things more, et cetera. Um, I think I, I would say the biggest thing is if you are creating smaller encapsulated abstracted functions, don't have any of those functions do any IO. So that means like no database queries. Um, it means uh, no remote requests, obviously, probably no reading files from disk, that kind of thing. If I you know, take one of these, um, this is one of my functions here. And if I imagine that this function has a, has a bunch of you know, different pieces of IO happening in it, let's say like that. So imagine this is just like the whole function time, these little pieces of, of the IO time. The more that this function is called, I'm just gonna be duplicating all of that IO time. And that is just gonna get progressively slower and slower and slower versus a um, design of the code that's really actually gonna allow me to have a small, simple function. And that is very fast function. You know, it's, it's basic input, basic output, essentially a pure function. And then um, I, my design pattern is such that I'm doing my, all of my IO in a most bulked and chunked kind of manner. Um, and then, you know, calling out to all of my different functions, simple, small functions that run very fast because of that. I would say typically in WordPress, it's fairly unusual to write a simple function that is CPU bound, that is gonna be actually impacting the overall performance of your application. Typically, um, now this is really just due to the, um, the nature of, of PHP, right, being a um, single threaded, non-event loop driven language, if you have any IO that is, you know, stalling everything. So the more IO you have scattered throughout all of your abstracted encapsulated fun functions, you ultimately really have a very, um, let's say like fragmented picture of when your uh, program is doing IO and, and uh, when it's doing CPU things. And that is ultimately going to be very difficult to optimize. It's much easier to optimize if you can have all of that, um, you know, data loading, loading things from the database happening at once rather than, you know, a thousand small times over a, a, a lot of functions. So I'm a big fan of abstraction and encapsulation. Um, but I, I would say that it's, uh, you're, you're not really going to go wrong, let's say, by introducing abstraction via breaking things into functions if you are keeping those functions as pure functions. And um, that will probably mean quite a lot less, uh, you know, abstraction than you might be used to. Um, but ultimately, when performance matters, um, that is the trade-off that you do need to make.